You are about to listen to Upon the Rock broadcast with Pastor Lauren Shakir of Foundation of the World Church. It is our prayer that each teaching will help build a godly foundation in your life. Please be sure to visit the church website at thefoundedworld.org for further information about this ministry and to view more teachings. Now, here is today's message. So I'm going to be teaching things out of this one today, and it's called what? The Spirit of Error. And a lot of us look at this thing like, ooh, what is that? Something wrong with him. Yeah, something is wrong with him. But that's how, you know, it, it, when I was picking all of these different spirits, I immediately saw this one as error because it's like, it, it, something ain't right, you know? He don't have eyes, no nose, it just, he got a big mouth and he got a lot of teeth, but it's like something is, is not right about this. But I think this spirit, yeah, he probably don't look like this in the spirit realm, but again, he's gonna look like this today. So. Uh, these, these spirits right here, this is the spirit that has false doctrine. This is the spirit that most unbelievers have on them. Uh, unsaved people. This is the spirit where it appears like I don't need Jesus. I can make it to heaven my own way. This is the spirit of it partners up with a cult it partners up with a lot of other things but it's the spirit of error everybody say the spirit of error spirit. this is a spirit that and I, I told you all a few weeks ago like how you don't have to bind every day this is one of those spirits you probably have to bind every day if you're praying for loved ones because they keep continuing to open the door to the spirit of error and every day you need the intercessors you need the prayer warriors. You need the, the spiritual people that know about warfare to attack this spirit because it's a spirit of error, but you have to bind that one and loose the spirit of truth. And so it's stubborn. This spirit is stubborn. It keeps coming back. And you're like, Lord, how long and do I need to deal with this spirit? You keep on doing your part of warfare until you see victory. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started in this. Um, and everybody has their, 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 their handouts. Now notice what it says right here. In fact, let me just go ahead and pray because I, I need to cover us, you, those that's watching, that God will speak what he wants to say. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity again to feed your people, to feed the flock of God, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to do this. I know you could have picked anybody else, Lord, and here I am again every Sunday teaching your people about warfare and deliverance. And God, I just know that subjects like this can cause a lot of reaction. I know it can cause even some retaliation in the spirit realm. But Lord, I cover these people, I cover myself, I cover those that's watching, I cover their minds, Lord through the blood of Jesus, Lord, that they will see this spirit of error, this spirit of deception, this spirit of falsehood, false doctrine, unbelieving. And Lord, that they will, as I'm teaching them, Lord, you will awaken the things that they need to see and what they need to hear. So they don't have to be uh, subject to the spirit, but they can identify it. Open their eyes, Lord, I pray. And as we move forward in this teaching, Lord, let revelation knowledge flow in Jesus' name. And we also bind Satan right now. We bind him in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, we overcome Satan through the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. So right now, Satan, you have no power, you have no victory, you have no authority in this place. We will teach the word of God and we will expose you for the thief and the liar that you are. And Lord, we seal this prayer right now in the name of Jesus, that you will have the victory and that you have already overcome the world and that your sheep know your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Alrighty. So the very first thing up there says error. In other words, it's a spirit of error, but you know what error is whenever you're doing some kind of transaction, 
you know, you go to the grocery store or whatever and they tell you the card was entered in wrong, you gotta re-enter your card. Something was wrong in the beginning stages that's caused you to not move forward in the, uh, in the proper transaction. You get what I'm saying? And so a lot of times people start off wrong, wrong doctrine, wrong card, wrong everything, and they build their lives off something that is wrong. Are y'all hearing me? And so this spirit is designed, especially now when I say build their life, it's not so much attacked at a little kid, not so much the little kid time, but the time of the awakening. Y'all get what I'm saying? There is a point where um, people start to really want to hear from God and they have this attraction or they have this hunger to want to know more. Y'all get it? This is when that spirit tries to come in, in the beginning stages. So when it says error, I want you all to see it as in the beginning when you're trying to learn more about God, make sure you have the right source. Make sure you have the word of God because all those spooky people out there will tell you you can get to God, get to Jesus, get to heaven without Jesus. And they had the nerve to say, y'all wrong, but it's something that from the beginning that car was inserted kind of backwards and you had to go all the way from the beginning and uproot some of that stuff and start all over again. So everybody say error. error. Another thing is unsubmissive. You get people who are just don't want to listen to anybody. They're not submissive. They, they want to make sure if anything's going on, they want to make sure they're the one on top. They don't want to submit to anybody. They don't want to help anybody. They always got a problem with anybody in authority. It's the spirit of error. You ever met people like that? They're just unsubmissive. You can go to work with them and they just, they always got issues with the boss or, or, or issues with somebody in authority. They have an unsubmissive spirit. Everybody else is cool. They come in with all of this yeast and all this habit trying to start some dumb stuff. Unsubmissive. But I want to go right here because I think that's, that's um, key. They're unteachable. Not because they can't be taught. They just choose not to learn. You can tell them black and white, show them in the Bible. You can show them everything and you can, you know, I like how Jesus described the Holy Spirit as a teacher as well. He will teach you what to say. He will teach you the words and everything. But sometimes, you know, the Holy Spirit will bear witness to what, what, what we're doing through the Word of God. And again, you can show people in the Word and it can be backed up by the Holy Spirit and still people will not listen to what you got to say. It's an unteachable spirit of error. Um, also, argumentative, defensive. In your book, it says argumentative, defend God's revelation to them personally. Y'all see that? So in other words, these are the people, and it happens in the church and outside the church. God told me. Now they can't back it up with the word. They can't back it up with the spirit. But God speaks personally to them only, and all y'all are wrong. Y'all get it? All y'all are wrong. Even though you got the Bible, I don't care what the Bible says, the Lord told me this. Spirit of error. And so you get people in the body of Christ who want to do their own thing. And they will say, the Lord, and then, and then sometimes, because I get people like that, they'll come and tell me, God told me this, and they don't line up with the word, and sometimes you got to just look at them and just shake your head like, oh, Jesus, spirit of error. And you can go and show them in the Bible, and they'll look at him like, well, I don't know, and they'll still try to manipulate it to fit their own needs. You got to be careful when it comes to when God tells you something. He will always confirm it through his word. If you don't find it in the Bible, you don't find it in the Word, then that didn't come from God. And people need to be taught that because everything you hear, the Lord told me to eat cornflakes instead of oatmeal, whatever, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, the Holy Spirit will confirm His authoritative Word in your life. But a lot of people, they get off because they think, and I'm not saying God can't speak to you all the time because the Holy Spirit lives in you. But they, they're having a cup of coffee with God every morning. And God is always changing his mind on something. Y'all get it? First, the Lord told you to do this. Then something happened and the Lord told you to do something else. Like God is schizophrenic or something. 
That's a spirit of error. Somebody didn't hear from God. Either that was God or that was gas. I say that all the time. That was those chitlins last night. It wasn't God. But you like to, you like to wrap it up in God and be defensive because you're thinking that you are uh, defending the word of God. But it's not God. It's this guy and the voice of God in your mind. All right. Uh, false doctrine. There's a lot of false doctrine out there. <laughs> I'm a, I promise I'm not going to get on it too much. All roads don't lead to God. Amen. They don't. Okay. No matter what the talk show people are saying, you are not God. Now, I get a lot of uh, spooky people <laughs> that tell me, you can, you, you, why are you telling those people that they need Jesus to get to heaven? Don't you know you're God? Don't you know that there's no such thing as heaven? There's no such thing as hell? Oh, yeah, they tell me that. They say, you are God already, and you're going, they'll say that I'm doing something wrong because I'm teaching you all the word of God. And they think that I have a spirit of error, but they have false doctrine. It doesn't, it doesn't identify, and it doesn't agree with anybody else. It's just their own thing. And a lot of times, this spirit, it will attach itself through something that appears to be right to you. So, they will get on your cultural background. Elephant in the room, you're a black man. Why are you serving a white Jesus? They, stuff, they say stuff like that. And don't you know that you're the true Israel? All of this stuff. The true Israel is the body of Christ. Not an ethnic background. He used that as a, the Bible talks about a schoolmaster or a law. To, so that the new, the real spiritual Israel, which is the church, the body of Christ, where there's no Jew nor Greek, black, white, bond, free, all of them are one in the anointing. But no, some people don't want to hear that. They think it has something to do with this, your color, your skin, instead of the blood that saved you. When you get to heaven, you're going to see all different kind of colors. But some people just can't get past the fact of color. So this spirit comes in. And confuse you, make you think that you're superior because your skin is darker than the other person, so you must be better. And the Lord doesn't see that. He sees one color, red. Are you covered in the blood or not? False doctrine. So it's a lot of false doctrine out there. And they will build off hate. So some people don't want to serve Jesus because the spirit of error came in and said, that's a white man's religion. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. But it's not a white man's religion. It's not a black thing. It's not a Mexican thing. It's a people thing. Y'all get it? Are y'all okay today? So we're going to deal with this. A servant of corruption. I can get a little bit more into that. But that's basically what's talk, what I was just got through talking about. Contentions or argumentative. They, some people, before they even say hello, they just want to come out arguing. They can't say, hi, my name is such and such. No, they want to come out blasting you. Because they are argumentative. New age movement. You know, you are God already. Open up your mind. Open up your third eye. Freemasons, Eastern stars, Scientology, all of these false religions that say you can get to God any kind of way you want to is based off this spirit of error. Are you all okay? Are you all ready for this word? Yeah, I know a lot of times people don't talk about this, but I think it's necessary, especially when I start seeing people with this spirit try to infiltrate members of my family members of, of or friends or people who i know you got to come back with you got to bind this spirit because it's creeping into the church all right so the first thing we're going to do we're going to talk about the ignorance so she's going to go ahead and read that on that first page but before we do that it says we're going to bind the spirit of error and we're going to lose the spirit of truth okay these are scriptures that you all can go home and meditate on but we're going to read through this, this book that we have. And those of you all that's watching, you can, you can get this online. It's free. Actually, we have copies of it here, but you can get it online. Just type in Strongman, his name, and his game, PDF. If you do that, the book is free. You can just watch along with us as we are. As she's reading it, you can follow along. You may need two tablets or two devices, a phone and a tablet or something. But that's how you do it if you want to really follow along. So, Mr. Shannon, let's go ahead and read that part. It's the Spirit of Error, chapter 15. We are of God. Oh, is it there? Oh, let me see. 
Are you missing the page? We are of God. Do you all have a page that says we are of God? You do on the very first page, second page. Uh oh, one page is missing. That's fine. Um, you got that book? Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to just read this and then it, we'll fix it next time with the first page. I'm sorry you all didn't have that, uh, but if you really want to follow along, it's, on, it's online. So, um, But it's just that one page is missing. Next, after she's done, we'll be able to go back to the other part. Okay, we are of God. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. Mm -hmm. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. First John 4 and 6. Okay, read that verse one more time for those who probably just didn't catch what you said. We are of God. Mm -hmm. He that knoweth God heareth us. Mm -hmm. He that is not of God heareth not us. Mm -hmm. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. In other words, God's children will hear his voice. He will know people who put on a front like they're not listening or put up a heart. I used to go to the prisons. I used to minister to those guys. And I remember how some of them be all hardcore. And they be holding the folding arms and they looking to the side. And I start preaching the word of God and that eyebrow start to go up and they start listening and they start leaning forward because God knows his own children. I don't care what it looks like on the outside. The Lord knows which ones are his. And so if you have a certain assignment or calling or ministry or what have you, the Lord knows he got your heart some kind of way. You just need to be taught so you can renew your mind. All right. So that's the scripture right there. It talks about we are we are of God. He who knows God hears us. In other words, if you're really of God, when somebody gets up and start preaching the word of God, you will recognize it because my sheep, what, know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So. All you have to do is just speak the word and God's children, it's like their ears pop up. They'll just know. No matter what they look like on the outside, their ears kind of pop up because they're listening to the word of God. All right. And those who don't hear us, you're preaching the word of God and they just kind of like, oh, whatever. Either it's one or two things. Either they have not um, walked into that particular assignment for their life. It's not time yet for whether it's disobedience or what have you. Or they're not from God. Now, that sounds kind of hard, but Satan sometimes has so much roots in people that they can't even lift up their head. So he who is not of God does not hear us. Hereby, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Is it going to be the spirit of truth or is it going to be the spirit of error? All right. So let's go to the next paragraph right there. What does it say? This strong man operates best when there is an ignorance of God's word. Mm -hmm. People do not deliberately set out to believe a false religion. Mm -hmm. They are swept into it because it appears to be the truth. It appears to be the truth. So this strong man operates when there's an ignorance of God's word. People who just don't stay in the Bible or they're brand new to the word of God. They haven't read it fully. They haven't understood it. They probably read a few scriptures, heard some you know, scriptures in Sunday school, Jesus wept, you know, all that kind of stuff. But they don't really know the word of God to a point where they can stand on it. This strong man will come in when there's an ignorance. That's why it's very important for you to be taught the word of God. Yes, you can preach it, but you need to be taught the word of God. You need to know what the Bible says, because if you don't, that strong man's coming in because you just you're just blind. And that's how he gets people. It appears to be truth. It appears to be right. It appears to be something that you can say, oh, that I, I can identify with that. Since you're not grounded and rooted in the word, anything sounds good then. Anything sounds good. Somebody can come to you and say, oh, you're God and you're, you're the original man. And don't you know you're supposed to be reigning in this? And, this. and because you're not gr grounded in the word, you're going to say, yeah, I believe that. That just sounds right to me. Spirit of error. That's why you got to have a firm foundation in the word of God before you start doing anything else. All right. Um, I have some notes here that I want to read. I'm, I'm glad that you all are. I'm glad we have a teaching church. All right. Truth will stand on its own. God's children will always recognize his words regardless of their outward appearance. Like I was stating earlier, if you or somebody you know is ignorant, ignorant does not mean dumb. It means not knowing. If you or you know somebody who is ignorant of the word of God, you, you stand a very strong chance of this spirit attaching itself to you. So if this person is not in the word, they're not listening to a lot of word based things. They are open to this spirit of error. Your job as intercessors is what? 
Y'all quiet today? Is it the rain? You got to bind it every day. You got to stand in the gap for them if they don't know the word themselves. Some people have to be the bridge in the gap and just pray, Lord, I bind that spirit of error that's on this person, that's on my family member, my son, my daughter, my auntie, uncle, whoever. You bind it and you lose spirit of truth. You have to beat down the thing, warfare, through, the, through deliverance. And because he told Jesus, Jesus says, I sent you out, not so you can go out there and just, uh, let me say it the right way. He says, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into the harvest field. He never said so much go out there and get people saved like we say in the church today. He said pray to the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers. In other words, people who can identify with that lost person, that's a laborer. They are in the kingdom, but they can reach the person that you're praying for because you may not be the person that's gonna get that family member saved, but you need to pray for the, to the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into the harvest field for that person. All right, um, let's go to Mirages. I know it's not on your page yet. We're going we're gonna to go to the part where, where it is. I'm not sure where it picks up at, but she's going to read Mirages. People lost in the desert with sun blazing down see mirages that have every appearance of being real, mm -hmm. but in reality are either figments of their imaginations or tricks the elements play on them. Mm -hmm. Many lost travelers follow mirages to their death because what they are seeing is always just out of their reach as they stumble along, searching for water or a way out of the desert. So in other words, just because it looks right, you're going in that direction, you're going more and more and more to death. But you're following something that you think appears to be right. You see an oasis in, in the desert and you're just running toward it, but more and more you get deeper and deeper and deeper in the desert until you eventually die. But sometimes people don't recognize it was just a mirage until it was too late. But while you're talking to them, they seem so confident that, no, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And they are following something that's not even of God until they die. Our world is filled. Our world is filled with spiritual mirages, urging lost souls to follow them to the water of life they so desperately need. But unless they have a map to guide them, they will search in vain because the terrain is so deceptive. That's right. Let's keep going. Jesus cries out to these parched souls. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. John 7, 37. Pause right there for a second. Jesus cries out. Now notice when it talks about how Jesus does cry, he lifts up his voice and he cries and says, if any man, not any brown man, any yellow man, any white man, any blue man, any green man, any man who wants to thirst, who has, who is thirsty, if any man thirst, let him come to me and I will give him living water. He's not going to force water down your throat. You have to come to him. You have to do the part where you recognize I, I need him. If you don't come to that realization, you will be chasing mirages until you die. Everything will sound good, everything will look good, but you're just so lost that you're just another person in the desert looking at an oasis, but it's not even there. You all hear me? And so that's why he says, if you thirst, if you want, if you are tired of the dryness of this world, why don't you thirst? If you thirst, then you have to come to me then, because I have living water. All right. So it was another part that says Christ is the only source. Let's read that. Christ is the only source of living water in this world. Mm -hmm. False religions, doctrines, and philosophies look good, but alas, they are just mirages and cannot satisfy the inner thirst of man's spirit. False religions, doctrines, and philosophies look good. You got all this money from all these people. Freemasons are doing all kinds of work in the community. It looks good. Got this brotherhood. Eastern Star's got a sisterhood. You know, it's Scientology got all this money. It looks good. But they cannot quench your thirst. You're going to be dry soon. Once all that is done, you're going to be wondering what happened. All right. Uh, and then you can go to the part where it says Jesus told the woman at the well. Is it picked up on you all's paper yet? Jesus? Okay. So we're on Jesus told the woman at the well. Jesus told the woman at the well, Whosoever drinketh 
of this water shall thirst again. Pause. That's the natural water that you see, the natural things that, can, that, that claim they can quench your thirst, but you're going to thirst again. Let's keep going. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Mm -hmm. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Mm -hmm. John 4, 13 and 14. Jesus offers us eternal life if we will receive him into our hearts and follow his word. If we receive him in our hearts and follow his word, he will give you that living water. But you have to have an appetite or a thirst for him. You don't just expect him to just come on and zap you and you feel a certain way. Are y'all hearing me? So a lot of times people are dying because they really don't have a thirst or a hunger for the things of God. And they go out there trying to fill it up with other things and they end up dying. In the desert, okay? After this false religion has run its course, course, the person realized they were. They are still empty and thirsty. False religions, this is my notes, false religions and doctrines always point out that you don't need Christ and that Christ is evil and that Satan or the world, or the world is good. It further points out that it is not sin, wait, that there is no sin and you are God's already. In other words, like I was telling you before, there's a lot of people out there that believe there's no such thing as sin. There's no such thing as heaven. That you are living in heavenly places right now. The Bible says heavenly places. But there is a such place as heaven. And there is a such place as hell. But as long as you're living on this earth, that kind of stuff sounds good. That there's no hell. So you can just do whatever you want to do. But that kind of stuff is not rooted in the word of God. If it goes against the word of God, it's a spirit of error. All right. Uh, there's no heaven. There's no hell. But heaven and hell are here on earth. Like I was just saying, that is that is false. So we're going to move forward to the spirit or spirit of error. Everybody OK? All right. The spirit of error usually works together with other strong men, such as a lying spirit, spirit of antichrist, seducing spirits, spirit of heaviness, spirit of haughtiness, perverse spirit familiar spirit and spirit of divination keep going please people who are dominated by a spirit of error cannot see the error if they could they would not continue following it their minds have been so clouded by the strong man that they are absolutely convinced they are right and everyone else is wrong how many of y'all met people like that they really believe that what they're saying is right and that all of us christians are dumb fools when Jesus is the only one who was born without sin and the only one who was resurrected and appeared before 500 people and ascended to heaven. Nobody else can say that. So what are, what do you think, uh, well, no, I'm not going to ask that yet, but when it comes to, I like how it says people who are dominated by the spirit cannot see the error. They're dominated by and they can't see the error. That's one way to let you know that they're from the world. They're not from, well, they're not a child. Let me say, yeah, they're not a, they haven't come into the real, realization where well, they're not born again, so they're not a child of God. They're not born again, so they're not a child of God. And so since they're a child of the world, they only see what the world wants them to see. And they can't see what you see because they're not born again, so the scales are not off their eyes. So the stuff that you're saying sounds foolish to them because they're a child of the world. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? And you can, you can show them until you're blue in the face and you can argue, you can do all kinds of stuff and they won't hear you because they got a spirit of error on them. I hope y'all hear me. All right. That's, uh, you know where you stop off that because I forgot. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it is necessary to be very patient with them and give them the word of God according to the dosage they can receive. What does that mean? And I know this is a commentary from, a, from missionaries who encountered this spirit, but she's going to read that, that sentence one more time, and I want you all to think about what does that mean. Go ahead, please. So it is necessary to be very patient with them and give them the word of God according to the dosage they can receive. I'm going to open the floor on that one, y'all. What does that mean? Come on, Bible students. Y'all know. Milk of the word? Okay. What else? The basics. Um, basics. I mean, even if you were to think about naturally, uh, if, if you give, like, just say a kid, if you give a kid too much iron, they're going to die. Mm -hmm. Because their their bodies just can't 
take all of that. It's like their body then turns on them mm -hmm. and kills them. And, and I think that's what we do sometimes. We as Christians, we go out there, we're trying to hammer people with the word saying, oh, this is, thus says the Lord. And they haven't even become, they haven't gotten to a place they can even accept God. Mm -hmm. You have to give them little bites at a time so they can realize, oh, there is a God out there. Mm -hmm. Let me maybe listen to what they have to say. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Anybody else? Oh, y'all gonna get quiet on me today. Yes, ma'am. You should, um, you shouldn't, as, as the body of Christ, we should overwhelm them with God's word. Because mm -hmm. it can be too much. Yeah. Anything new to to you, and you get it all at once, it can, it can be overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, give them a little bit. A little bit at a time. It doesn't mean that you are watering down the word. You are just being, I mean, some, some mothers, when they, they're feeding a newborn baby, they, they chop up the food into uh, pieces that the baby can chew on. And so, yes, you may be right by saying, you're going to go to hell if you don't repent. Yeah, you can say that. But they ain't going to learn. They're not going to get that because you have to come to them on their level. And it takes wisdom of the Holy Spirit to do that. So by the doses that they can receive, some people can't handle Yeah, I teach an hour long. Some people can't handle that. That's considered strong meat. And some of y'all right now are like, yeah, Pastor, I haven't said what you're saying. But, but y'all are here. But some people can probably only handle a 20-minute sermon. That's all they can handle. I got time for that Shakir. He's an hour-long preacher. Oh, Lord, I, let me get up out of here. Well, I'm just one of those guys because that's the call that I have to be an hour long. Okay? Um, but everybody can't hear that. So what you have to do is take wisdom and just bring a little bit at a time and feed them until they get a sh enough strength and they can start recognizing. Then you can give them a little bit more. Because you got a lot of hellfire and brimstone preachers out there that are saying the right thing, but they're running people away because they don't know how to use wisdom or to give them to them in the right way. All right? So the doses they can receive. Okay. Uh, it takes just... Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. It may be just the word the Holy Spirit will have us speak. Then the Spirit takes the word and uses it as a light to reveal the error in their lives. Mm -hmm. As the lights are turned on, each person is able to identify the error he has been pursuing. So in other words, the co-worker that God says, you, you, you're supposed to win. Don't think that you're going to be the one that's going to take them all the way from point A to point B. You may just be the one who just plants a little bit. And every day they come in, you may have... Just a word. And you may not say, thus said the Lord. You may not have a quote-unquote scripture, but the words that you're talking about are from the word of God. And it's enough for them to kind of say, oh, okay, I like you. Or, you know, I can handle you. You got to be able to do that. If, if somebody has the, a spirit of error on them, you have to be wise on how you win them. All right? Uh, okay, let's go to the next. Anybody, real quick, anybody else got anything else on that part before I go on? Anything you want to say at all? Okay. Let's go ahead, Minister Shannon. We can also aggressively attack this spirit through our own private intercession. Mm -hmm. We can daily bind this strong man of error and loose truth into their minds and lives. Mm -hmm. Jesus is truth. Therefore, we are really loosing Jesus to have a greater influence on them. Mm -hmm. Because they are constantly opening themselves up to error, we must be consistent in our binding and loosing until they commit their lives to Christ and renew their minds in the word of God. Good, 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 good. Uh, so, again, I keep opening the floor. What does that mean, too? <laughs> I'm trying to get y'all to talk today, it looks like. It's raining outside. The part where it says, because they are constantly opening themselves, to, well, Jesus is true, therefore, really releasing Jesus to have a greater influence on them. It talks about how we have to do it daily because they're constantly opening themselves up to error. We must consistent in binding and loosing until they commit their lives to Christ and renew their mind. I know it's self-explanatory, but what does it say in your own words? Yes, sir. Kind of like filling the atmosphere with, you know, the words and hopefully it rubs off. Mm-hmm. It's good. That's good. And that means you can't be tired because you don't see any results. Sometimes you don't you keep doing something over and over and over and over again and you're like, Lord. Give me some sign. You may not get any sign. <laughs> you may have to just keep on doing it because you are the watchman of that house or the watchman of that job or whatever that situation is. And you got to keep on going until God says, all right, this is a set time. Thank you for your intercessory. You're just standing in the gap. Now I can move forward from there because without your prayers, they'll all be lost. So sometimes you have to keep on doing it until it kind of rubs off on them, like Quincy said. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right. Um, 
in our crusades. Y'all get anything out of this so far? Yes. Good. In our crusades in Latin America, the people many times repeat, the people will many times repeat the sinner's prayer for a month or more before they begin to understand what has taken place in their lives. Mm -hmm. Their hearts have been so darkened by centuries of witchcraft and false religion that the light seeps very slowly into their inner being. Mm -hmm. But what a joy to see the light of God finally penetrate into their hearts and see them light up like a light bulb has been switched on inside of them. Mm -hmm. The more fanatically they serve the devil's lies, the more fanatically they will follow Jesus. We must not be reticent in mm -hmm. reaching out to those who seem beyond help. There is a spirit on the inside of them crying out for reality. All right, I love that part because it lets you know that that hard shell that you see on people if you break past it, they're going to be just as on fire for the Lord. If you can, the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. If you can use your portion of how you minister or how you, you know, talk to them about the word of God. If you get them saved and get them on, on fire, they will be just as zealous, I guess, for the things of God. If you, if you do it the right way, but you have to, for a long time, bind that spirit of error on them while you are standing in the gap until things start turning around all right uh so me i kind of look for those people who look like they're just a little bit uh real strong and they just all overbearing and they very argumentative sometimes i, I you know i'll talk with them because a lot of times inside of them they're crying out for the real truth all right so don't just turn everybody off just because oh they got a spirit of air on them no they may you may be the one that can reach them okay all right uh, in fact, let's, um, yeah, let's, let's read this story real quick. And you, you may be reading for a little bit, but I hope you all get what's going on during one of our crusades. During one of our crusades in Costa Rica, a man would drive by in his pickup truck nearly every night screaming obscenities, honking his horn, and generally making a nuisance of himself. This craziness went on for nearly three months. Mm -hmm. We had been constructing a new church building during that time to house the new congregation when the rains came later on. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks before we moved the crusade into the nearly completed church building, the wild man finally stopped his pickup truck long enough to listen to the word of God. Mm -hmm. We didn't know that he was an alcoholic and that his business, marriage, and life were falling apart. But the light of God's word pierced his alcohol fog soul and he accepted Christ as his savior. Mm -hmm. For a while, we missed the wild man's nightly visits until Luis finally testified that he was the one who had been screaming and honking his horn to disturb the services for mm -hmm. the past few months. Mm -hmm. But Jesus has changed me, he told the people. I have been delivered from alcohol, and now I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. All right. Um... So this guy who, who, who appeared to be so hard and so obstinate and so, you know, like always no, no hope for him, ended up listening to the gospel long enough so that his heart got changed and then he accepted him and uh, uh, we're going to move forward to that next part. We hadn't done any of the electrical wiring in the new building yet. Mm -hmm. We just moved the string of light bulbs from the lot to the church mm -hmm. auditorium. One night, Luis asked to talk to me. I'm an electrician by trade, he said, and God has told me that I should do all the electrical installation in our new building. Mm -hmm. From that time on, Luis was our official electrician, and he wired all the large church buildings we constructed in Costa Rica, as well as the open air crusade lots where the new churches actually began. There was nothing Luis would not do for the work of God. The last time I talked with him, he was preparing to enter the ministry. All now right. I look. Okay. Sorry, you good. Now I look for fanatics to lead to Jesus. They make tremendous Christians. See, oftentimes Satan will keep people bound with the spirit of error because he recognized their potential for the kingdom. Y'all hear me? Yeah. A lot of times people are bound only because Satan knows how strong you will be for the kingdom. Let me put a spirit of error on you now so that you won't have that kind of influence for the kingdom. So again, don't write people off just because they look like they're just... Uh, too hard to get along with. They may have a spirit on them and they're kind of waiting on you to be the one that will help them get out of that because they're, they're actually crying for something more. That's why they're acting out like that. 
And so they need somebody who's bold enough and not, not afraid of them that will kind of confront them. And you let God do his job. All you have to do is be the vessel. You got to be a vessel of honor and let God do his job. And you, through the Holy Spirit, you have to just be led by the Spirit. Tell them what, 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 the, what the Lord is saying and walk away. Don't think you have to kind of babysit everybody until they get to a certain level. You just have to be obedient to the call that you have. And God will give you grace for that calling. And you just be faithful at that. Are y'all hearing me? Because this Luis guy, they, kind of, they probably could have called the police on him and let him go and did something else. But he sat along and heard the gospel and then he ended up doing all the electrical work for the church. Satan knew that. That's why he had that guy bound like that. So people who's always coming around you or trolling and doing all that, they're actually listening because something inside of them is crying out. Just be obedient and keep on feeding them the word of God. And you, one plants, another waters, but God gets the increase. You let God do his, gonna do his job, okay? And um, that will be, that'll be that. But I want to talk a little bit about this. She, I want you to just read just the first paragraph because a lot of this, it's, it's old school. I mean, by the time it was written, it was there, but there's, not, there's nothing new under the sun. So just read that uh, part for me, please. A cult type of organization that has come out into the open is the New Age movement. Mm -hmm. Their promise of a new age, however, is just the same old worn out lie of the devil, mm -hmm. wrapped in attractive tissue paper to deceive the world. The, the basic New Age error is a belief that Satan is the good force in the universe and God is evil. All right, so. Um, have y'all seen people like that that just that would say that you know basically they probably wouldn't say it like this especially when you start climbing up some of these ranks they don't tell you in the beginning but when you get high enough some of these people who came out of freemasonry and eastern stars they will tell you that god is the evil one of the world and then satan or you the world is the good part the reason why you're wrestling with sin is because you're just actually being who you're supposed to be so let all of that sin come out because there's no such thing as sin. You're not going to heaven. There's no such thing as heaven. They tell you all of this to, in the beginning stages, they don't tell you that. They just say, oh, it's a brotherhood. We're going out feeding the homeless. We're doing this and a lot of other things going on. Eastern stars, we do the same thing, but it's actually the pentagram upside down, which is riding the goat, basically. Most people don't see that. They just see all the good stuff. You see Scientology, you see all of these movie stars, you see everybody who's wrapped up in this stuff. It's new age. It's nothing new under the sun. And so basically, the, he's, he's trying to make you think that what we're doing with the word of God is, is wrong. We're the enemy. You know, we're, we're the ones that's, that's evil. God is trying to keep you down from something. God is trying to, uh, you know, uh, keep you away from you living your life. And that Satan wants you to just live free. Just do whatever you want. You see what I'm saying? And that's the same thing that's described in Isaiah chapter 14. That he wants to ascend above the thrones of God and make himself like the most high God. And so when you see new age stuff and you see all these cults, anything that says you can get that to God without Jesus is a cult. Anything that says that. And so by you just, you know, being a monk and being up in the mountains and you're doing the home and all this kind of stuff and you don't need Jesus. All of that is new age. And some of the, the, uh, the words that you use, you got to be careful that you're not, you know, saying some of the same doctrine that they're saying, because even in, and, I'm, and I didn't mean to say this, but I'm going to say it now. You got to even be careful with, and I get this, you got to be careful with some of the Bibles that you have, the translations, because some of them, and it's, and it's a lot of reports out there, they t they're slowly taking out the word of God more and more. Some of the, and I, I love NIV and um, New American, all that, but even those, they, they have it, sometimes they even have it at the bottom, like this is taken out and it's at the bottom, but there are some Bibles now, they take it all out together, or they word it so differently that it, it loses its power. So sometimes you got to be very careful that you, if you're, if you're a seeker, get you a lot of, and I'm sad we have to say this in our society, but you sometimes got to get a lot of different Bibles, a lot of different translations just to get the full meaning of, of one scripture. And a lot of people don't want to work that hard. That's too much work. You know, just heard, and, I, and I'm not sure if this was something that I was supposed to have seen because of telling you all, but 
the guy who, and it's, and it's real, it's not, it's not a, a spoof, but the guy who wrote the Message Translation Bible, uh, according to those reports, and I read it, embracing the, the, the LGB lifestyle now, say, oh, it's fine. Um, I had a problem with it before, but you know what, it's okay. I think they'll still be fine and they can still get to heaven living the way they live. And this guy helped translate the Message Bible, the Message Translation. What am I saying? Is that if you're going to live for God, if you're going to really do this thing, make sure that you are really on his side. Because there's a lot of spirits of error out there. And everybody, again, has a word that they're trying to say that you, you don't need this, you can just do this. If you're going to be a student of the word, you need to bury yourself in the word of God. Because as you grow and as you do things and you go out there in the world, if you're not grounded, you will fly away. I had a, I'm not sure if it was a dream or a vision, but in my, in my quote unquote vision, I saw this tornado or hurricane or this windstorm. It looked like something out of Wizard of Oz because everything was brown and flying. I don't know. But I was looking up, and this is no way to kind of say it was me. I'm not sure if it was me that's supposed to have been seeing this or just somebody who's supposed to have been seeing this. But as I looked up in the sky, it was all these people just flying across. And they were, their arms were open and their legs, and they were just kind of like flying. Like, I mean, just flying. And I'm sitting here looking at them, and they were going up and down, just flying. You saw all the dirt. You saw all the trees. You saw houses being ripped out. And people were just in the sky, just flying and flying and flying. And then me, or the person who I was supposed to have been, I looked down, and there was this, uh, you know how you get those anchor things that's in the ground with a chain on it? And the, whoever I was, I would have, it was, it was grounded where you had some kind of chain wrapped around it. And even though you was in the storm being pulled, you couldn't go too far because you were anchored down. But in my quote unquote vision, I saw all the other people and they were hollering, they were screaming, and, but they were, just, they were just being blown away, blown away. And um, I think that's symbolic of the kind of area that the body of Christ is entering into. There's gonna be a lot of people being swept away and those that are anchored will survive the storm. They still are going through the storm like everybody else, but they're not blown away. I mean, those people, they were like blown, all you saw was just a shadow of them. And so I just think for that's why I teach the way I teach for you all and those that watch is because I think that if you're going to really be grounded, now is the time to really just be serious because it's getting it's getting it's getting bad out there and it's getting worse. But anyway, that's that's what I had. So I want you to kind of skip over the new age thing because you can do your own research on this. Um, because they bold with their stuff, they'll tell you all kinds of stuff, and it's basically a cult, a new age cult, all right? It sounds good, it looks very attractive, look at this pretty building, it's a lot of other money that's involved, but these are synagogues of Satan. They're synagogues of Satan. And yeah, it looked like, well, nobody wanna to come to church anymore. Well, you know what? He says, broad is the path that leads to destruction, and narrow is the path that leads to eternal life, and only a few find it. The body of Christ may be entering into an age where the churches may be sporadic, may be small, but those that's there, they're anchored now. They're not going to be blown away from anything, okay? Um, I had some notes that I want to read before she goes to beware, and then after that, we're going to do the little story and we'll be done. The people in this paragraph that are mentioned today, I mean, you can read it in your spare time, but basically, uh, the people in the paragraph that are they're not even mentioned today because anything that is man-made will come to naught. However, there is nothing new under the sun Satan uses the, old, uses the same old tricks on new people. Generations come, generations go. Satan's, uh, Satan just keeps repackaging his tricks in different wrapping paper. In other words, it's the same exact thing. He just packaged it a little bit different, made it look a little more attractive. The music is still doing the same way. You got different kinds of stuff, but it, underlining it is still Satan's agenda. Okay? Are y'all hearing me? All right, so... Um, we got these last two points and we're going to be done. Somebody gave me some of these things and they were saying that you're, you're of God. And this is one of the things that they were pointing out that we were born divine. The biggest lie that was ever told to us is that we were born in sin. What well, the Bible says, you're born in sin and what? Shaping into iniquity. Well, people want to say, no, you're not born in sin, you're born divine. Now, you are like 
God because you are the children of God, but you are not the most high God, El Elyon. You're not God. You're a child of God, which means you have attributes and characteristics like him, but you are not God. Y'all hear me? People out there believing that they are God. That's a spirit of error. That's the other thing. What is the guy gave me? God does. God, God don't have religion. So they think Christianity is a, is a religion. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship with God and man. See, we broke that relationship in the garden when Adam ate the fruit. He had relationship. Jesus came back and restored it and brought that relationship back. So they think Christianity, Buddhists, Muslims, Islam, all of that is religion. When Christianity is the only one that's not a religion. Everything else is religion. Religion is do, 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 do. It's works that you have to do in order to be a certain way. But with Christ, you already, it's already done. It is finished. That's what, he talk, what do you think he was talking about when he said it is finished? Are you hearing me? So look what they said here. What if I told you that heaven and hell is merely your higher or lower state of mind that you can travel to here in a physical, in the physical, through whatever vibration you choose to put out? Sounds batty to us because it's like that doesn't even line up with the word. But they said just vibrate. You can get to heaven anytime you want to. Just vibrate, boy. Just vibrate. So he says, uh, in that mind that you can just travel here and there through physical, through, through whatever vibration you choose to put out. What if I told you that they are not, they are not places you go when you die? What if I told you that you never die because you are an endless, infinite energy that will live forever? That sounds like Satan. But you'd be shocked at how many people believe this. To us, it sounds like, oh my goodness, that, oh, who, who believes that kind of junk? Oh, it's a lot of people who are not rooted and grounded in the word. They believe, I'm already God. Why do I need God? I'm already God. Y'all hear me? So you got to beware. So she's going to read the part of beware. Ye therefore, beloved, see ye know these things before. Beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own I like that because it says, therefore, beloved, you see all of this stuff out there. If you don't take the time to root, I say it every Sunday, if you don't take the time to have devotions, to read, to pray, to study, you can be swept away like everybody else. How many preachers you've seen fall because they start listening to all this spooky stuff out there? They start adding stuff to the word of God and they start getting off. And now they got a, 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 a they, they produce sin and cause of Satan. And they have doctrine of devils. You got to stay in the word. He says, seeing that you know these things before. In other words, I told you this is going to happen in the beginning. You make sure you're not being led away by the spirit of error of the wicked. And you will fall from your own steadfast. You're already standing good. Coming to church, you're being involved. You listen to the word. You're enduring that preacher who's preaching up there for an hour. And you're just sitting there. That's steadfast. But you can get off if you just try to stop listening to the words, stop listening to worship. You kind of drift away. You can have a spirit of error on you. All right. That verse that follows, please. The verse that follows gives us the secret of how to walk in the truth. Mm -hmm. As we are led by the Holy Spirit, we help those who will listen so they can come to a knowledge of the truth. Who will listen. Everybody's not going to hear you, so don't get discouraged because these folks ain't listening to me. Everybody's not going to hear you because everybody's not of God. But God knows his own children. And you have to be in position when he tells you to move, to just move. Okay, keep going, please. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. The word of God is our only foundation. Mm -hmm. Paul instructed Timothy to study to show thyself approved, proved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, now, um, and I'm almost done, I promise you all, but I want, uh, you know what, let me, let me just keep going to the next part. I was going to open for something else, but I think I need to bring this part out before we do. I think it's that means... 
but grown in grace mm -hmm. and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's right. That means there is a right way and a wrong way to divide or interpret God's word. The correct way is to understand that truth will not contradict itself. God cannot be evil. He is always good. Mm -hmm. Satan cannot be good, even though there there are times he appears to be. He is always evil. Pause. When can Satan appear to be good? Anybody? Oh, I have a good question. <laughs> um, when uh, these mediums come up to these broken-hearted family members, and they say, oh, your family member, they watch over you. They're in a great place. Mm -hmm. They're taking care of you. So it's giving uh, consolation to the to the bereaving person, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's a lie. It's leading them astray. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, that's good. And some people need to repent for visiting psychics and mediums and let that familiar spirit open themselves up to. What else? How can Satan appear to be good? Come on. By giving promotion to people, um, you know, but for the wrong reasons. Promotion to people for the wrong reasons? What an example of that. Like um, when they, when uh, people sell their souls for. Very good. People who sell their souls for a little bit of fame and money. Yeah. Yep. They let their on top. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got their bills paid. Some Christians are still struggling. Lord, help! And you got this other person up there, they just throwing away money. What else? How can Satan appear to be good? Yes, ma'am. When he shows you and tries to give you the things that your flesh wants. Mm -hmm. When he tries to show you and gives you the things that your flesh wants, your flesh will get you in trouble. Somebody else raise their hand. Yes, sir. Deeper. Yep. By then it's too late because your mind is so enamored, enamored with it that you're like, either I'm going to go all the way or I'm going to have to just really just break my ties. And so a lot of people don't break those ties because of that, that commitment. All right. Anybody else before we move on? How does Satan appear to be good? Because Satan is doing something. He's getting the body of Christ. He's getting people out there. How does he appear to be good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everything is okay. And they, they try to, I guess, we as Christians, but we know better, but they try to twist God's words and say, God loves everybody. Yeah. And He does love everybody. He does, mm -hmm. But, he, he's, God is a just. Yes. And He's good and He's just. But a, a just judge would not be just if He let a family. Who killed a person if you met let one person who killed a family of five and he said well I'm good so I'm gonna let you off that's not a just judge then you know God is a just God and he's good anybody else before we move on all right let's read that part right? if you probe if you probe the false religions and cults long enough with the word, mm -hmm. you will discover without fail their basic error. Yeah. Satan just cannot help himself. Mm -hmm. He is so twisted that when the light of the word is shown on him, he will always reveal himself for what he is, a thief, a liar, a killer, and a destroyer. If you keep digging and keep digging and keep digging on all of these things, you're going to recognize that Satan is behind it. It may look good and it may sound good, but if you keep on doing your part, if you really want to know the truth, because that's what that's what that's what Pilate said when he was interviewing Jesus to see if he's going to if he was going to crucify him or not. Him and Jesus start talking and having this dialogue. And then Jesus talks about you're going to know the truth. And then Pilate, Pilate stopped and said, what is truth? And that always jumped out to me because a generation of people that's just saying, what is the real the real truth? You know, everything else is saying this. But what is the truth? Because the truth will stand. Error may look like it's nice. But it will not stand. The truth is going to stand. And the truth don't need anybody to, to prop it up. All it has to do is just be there and people will know that's the truth. You know how it is when somebody's really saying something and it's a, a chord in your spirit and you just look at it and be like, that's the truth. You can hear everything else that sounds good, but you know the truth when you hear it. And God's people are like that. They will hear the truth and they'll know that's God. The other stuff may sound good, but it's something fishy about it. But that's God. And you have to be a vessel of honor to bring that, that truth. Okay? Um, we're at the, was it the scorpion and the frog? Are y'all okay? We got two more things and we're done. So she's going to read this story about the scorpion and the frog. And then we're going to bind and pray.
The story is told of the scorpion and the frog who were on the bank of a river. Mm -hmm. The scorpion asked if he could ride across the river on the frog's back. The frog said, oh no, when we get to, when we get to the middle, you will sting me and we'll both drown. Mm -hmm. That would be foolish of me, replied the scorpion. I'm smarter than that. That is why I'm asking you to carry me so I won't drown. Mm -hmm. After a time, he convinced the frog of his good intentions and they began their journey. When they arrived at the middle of the stream, the frog proved to be a prophet. The scorpion couldn't resist the urge to sting the frog. Why did you do that after promising me you wouldn't? Now we're both going to die. I'm sorry, frog, answered the scorpion sor sorrowfully. It's just my nature to sting. Now, you can see the illustration right there, and it's can be a little comical, and that is a huge frog. I just want y'all to see the frog, that's all. But that's a huge frog and a huge scorpion. If you, want, if you run across something like that, just go the other way. But anyway, so the nature of it is it, he had this dialogue, the scorpion and the frog had a dialogue. Anytime you give your ear to something, you can open yourself up to something that is, you know, demonic and other things. And you will go along the path and let this thing happen. Because after all, it sounds good. The scorpion's tone sounds good. He doesn't look like it. He's going to hurt me because after all, if, if he hurt me, I'm hurting him. And so let's just do this journey. Let's see how far we get. And then in the middle of it, if you keep on digging, you're going to find out that Satan can't help himself. He's going to reveal who he is. Now, it sounds real good to know, to sound like you are divine and you're born in this world without sin and you are God. You keep on believing that and you're going to see the sting of, of Satan. And you will lose your inheritance for the kingdom. Okay? So, um, Satan kind of does this conversation. And if you're not rooted in the word and you're not listening to the word, you're going to fall and listen to whatever he has to say because uh, you have a dialogue going on with him. You have to always come back with the word of God. If you're not listening to the word, let somebody teach the word to you then. Let them uh, listen to you too. You got to get the word in your, in your spirit so that you won't fall to the, to the tricks of the enemy. All right? I know that's old-fashioned preaching. So I'm going to read this part of Satan's basic nature, and after that, we're going to just pray. When we understand that the basic nature of Satan is to destroy and the basic nature of God is to bring life, we will be well on, our, on the road to understanding God's word. When, again, when we understand that the basic nature of Satan is to destroy and the basic nature of God is to bring life, we will be well on, our, on the road to understanding God's word. Except Christ as your savior allow the light of god's word to illuminate your path follow the direction of the holy spirit and you will always everybody say always, always. you will always know the truth and the truth will everybody say will yeah. will set you free so if you just it sounds basic but only thing that if god had any kind of faults which he doesn't if god has any kind of faults he made the word too easy he did all you have to do and Satan even dis disrupts that. All you have to do is if you stay in the word and you seek after him, not just come to church, but you got to ask, you got to seek, and you got to knock. If you don't do that, then you stand a very good chance for the spirit of error coming on you. You have to do your own asking. You can't live off your parents' faith, your grandma's faith, the pastor's faith. You have to have your own faith. And if you do that, you will, you will be anchored in the things of God. But Satan's basic nature is to destroy you. So it may sound good in the beginning, but it will destroy you. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna stand up, we're gonna do the binding and loosing, okay? I'm gonna um, start it and then you all kind of repeat after me and say it with your heart. And when you say prayers like this, you can also intercede for your family and friends and loved ones. Uh, or you, if you have, listen to some of this false doctrine before you probably want to repent over that okay so what we're going to do we're going to bind this strong man and again this is one of those spirits you kind of do on a continual basis and we're going to loose the spirit of truth so everybody say out loud say father, father thank you thank for giving me, for giving me a, firm a firm foundation to build my life on, build my life on. in this world so full of lies and deception, I can rest upon the truth of your word. Say which heart. Forgive me for trusting in myself. I place my life completely in your hands. Forgive me for all of my sins. 
I accept Jesus Christ, accept Jesus Christ as, the as the Lord and Savior, and Savior of, my life, of my life. And I promise, and I promise to, live to live according, according to, your word to your word from this moment on. This moment Here we go. Satan, Satan in, the in the name of Jesus, I bind your spirit of error. According to Matthew 18 and 18, that says, whatsoever you shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. Say it with your heart. I refuse, say it, I refuse to follow your twisted ways of thoughts. Or your twisted ways and thoughts. I command you to leave me alone. In the all-powerful name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love you with all my heart. And I desire to serve you with, with, all, that, with all that is within me. I loose the Holy Spirit. Say it. I loose the Holy Spirit of truth in my life. According to Matthew 18 and 18, to Matthew 18, and 18 that, tells me, that tells me whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I thank you for helping me to be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just a simple, simple, sample prayer of deliverance when it comes to the spirit of error. Whatever you bind, you loose the opposite. Okay, and so uh, I hope this teaching, I know it was a little meaty for you, but I hope this teaching was good for those that's wrapped up in false doctrines and false religions and false things because uh, there's no way out when it comes to that. Those are just mirages. And so we have to be founded and grounded in the word of God because the spirit of error is real. And everybody has to make a decision who they're going to serve. You're going to choose this day who you're going to serve. Thank you for listening to Upon the Rock broadcast. If you enjoyed this message, please visit the church website at thefoundedworld.org for a free download. Also, please be sure to share this message with your family and friends on social media sites to help spread the word of God. Have a great week.